Hey, it's Coach with Tactical Hive. I'm out here on the range today and I want to talk to you a little bit. I've been getting asked about uh, the proper height for optics. Okay, when I was operating, red dots were fairly new, you know, back in 1995 when I uh, was going through Green Team. So we had either the absolute co witness and the lower third co witness. So that, what are we talking about there? Here with the red dot, when you flip up your backup irons, if you're looking straight through the center of that, that's absolute co-witness. If you get a little bit higher, about a half inch higher, that's what we call one-third, lower one-third co-witness or bottom one-third co-witness. And what that does for you is it allows your head to be up a little bit higher. It's not absolute, it's not exactly the same, but your head can be up a little bit higher. And that's important when you're moving. If I'm moving and shooting, I don't want to have my head kinked down here like this. Okay, if my head's kinked down like there, I don't move very well. So you want to keep your head up more. So this one's absolute. About half inches, half inch higher would be uh, lower third. Okay, but now these days, guys liked it so much that their head was up. They're going to put it way up here. So it's about inch and a half, uh, almost two inches over the top of the rail. What this allows you to do is once I'm here, I can come up, my head barely even moves. I'm looking through there. So it's not really a cheek weld, it's a chin weld. But as long as I know where to come and I come in like this, my head stays up and it doesn't move. All right, the way I have that one set up, some guys set up the red dot so it just sits up there nice and high. I have this set up with a 5X, uh, this is a Vortex, one of their new uh, 5X prism scope. So it sets it up right about where I want it to keep my head up. And then if I'm close in, I use the red dot. If my target's far away, I can drop my head down and I've got that powered optic to look through with the ACSS reticle. It's actually a pretty cool little optic here. Okay, the thing that it won't do though is with this, you've got co-witness, right? So if for some reason your red dot goes down, all I have to do is either use the optic as like a rear aperture for close range, it'll get you there. Or you can flip this up and be looking right through it. And you know, because there's no magnification with a red dot optic, it's like it's not even there. Okay. With this one, you don't have that option. So what guys do, if, if all this screws up, something gets caked with mud, gets hit by something, banged, and it's not working anymore, then I've got a quick release here. I can knock it off and then flip up my backups. Some guys don't want to do the, uh, the quick release here, so they'll roll over and do uh, like 45 degree iron sights off to the side. So it's just roll it over and aim. So it's up to you how you want to run it but that just gives you three options for, you know, bad days. Optics nice and high on this one, so I get to keep my head up. Bring it up. All right. So my head stays up. And the advantage of that is, whether it's day or night, my head's up. But at night, if I'm on nods, I can put my nods right behind this. If the optic is too low, I mean, you can't really get your, your head down there with a helmet with nods on. So to get used to doing it both day and night, you might as well just have your red dot nice and high. Whether you mount an optic underneath it or not, that's up to you. I like to have some powered optic just so I can observe out to where my rifle is capable. And this one has an 18 inch barrel. It should be for a, a fair amount of distance. So with this one, if my head stayed up like this, I'm, I'm staring over the top. So whatever you use, you gotta train with it and be used to it. But this is kind of what we used to have it. So my head has to be kinked over just a little bit, but not too bad. I can still move with it. So whatever you got, training with it is the most important thing. If you don't train with it, you're not gonna be able to use it when, uh, when the chips are down. So I hope this cleared up a few things. Uh, I had a couple people ask me about this and this is kind of what the guys are running with now because these days the, the enemy is getting more and more capable and you can't just run around shining lasers everywhere like we used to because 
pretty much everybody's got night vision these days. It's not like the beginning of the G-Watt when we, you know, paint things with lasers and run around. As soon as people see what the hell's going on over there, it attracts attention to yourself. And we don't like to do that. So we're trying to, the, the less that you can emit, the better, right? Anyway, hope this clears up a few, few things. If you like this content, like, subscribe, and leave me some comments. <laughs>